Today I'm going to talk a little bit about Houdini 20's new cloud tools. There's a few new features in Houdini 20 that make it very accessible for beginners. One of those being cloud tools. Before we would do it a lot in VOPs and adding noise, um, which is also what you sort of do here, except they made it much more accessible and much more intuitive. I've already started my setup. I've got my node tree, it's quite small. There's not too much detail on here, but it's really enough to get a nice looking, scientifically accurate cloud. So let's talk about these nodes. With this cloud shape generate, what it does is basically give us our base features for our cloud. Um, you can choose its width, you can choose its height, you can choose the type of cloud that it is. I like the Mediocris cloud. That being said, we also have these ones, which are quite interesting. Congestus is very interesting. And it does all this stuff for you, yeah? It creates the clumps and it creates the, the geometry and the shape that we're gonna need in order to create a volume that's accurate. I'm gonna keep mine as Mediocris because I think it's interesting. There's a few features that you'll see which are very similar to how you would have done clouds regardless. We have point separation, we have size, distortion, flat and bottom, which you can also do with a cloud clip, which is what we're gonna do. So let's keep moving. We have attribute noise. This is simply just gonna move around our geometry a little bit, just to make it a little bit more uneven. I want to go for like a wispy sort of smoke. Um, so I'm trying to like, differentiate the shape a little bit. Now, as you would have done with previous sims, we have a VDB from particles. So essentially we're going to start creating a volume from this. I've chosen a fog VDB uh, because of the type of noise that we're going to be adding. This is what you want to do. So it's still noises, it's still volumes, it's still a very similar workflow. However, it's a bit more intuitive and some of the parameters they've given us are very nice. I've clipped my cloud now. So then we've got that sort of flat bottom, which is quite interesting. You see? So it's a little bit flat, so slightly stylized. I've then got this cloud adjust density profile. And really what I've done with this is just slightly uh, blurred out the density between the edges. Yeah. I think this just gives it a nice shape. I think it's a little bit more realistic for the kind of clouds I'm trying to make. That being said, you can tick these off. It's a very cool way of adjusting density where you would have had to previously done it differently, yeah? Okay. Now. Just as you do when you're adding noise, most of the time, I've split off my cloud into two separate, uh, two separate outputs. And I'm adding noise to both of them. You could go into this into more detail. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you would. However, I think this gives us quite an interesting base output where we have just two, just two VDBs that we're going to combine. So what I've done here is I've just clipped the bottom of the cloud just so we've got like this tiny little distance. I've put the direction, the negative one in the Y so that we're clipping from the bottom. Otherwise, it'd clip from the top. Right, so it's facing downwards and then I'm also giving it this wispy noise. Clouds very much work by having a volume and adding noise to them. Uh, you can adjust this as you would with any other kind of noise. And then I clipped the cloud from the bottom this time. So you see if I pull this away, you see that I clipped from the bottom. This is gonna be the bulk of our cloud. Um, I'm adding two noises to this in order to give it the variation that I need. So we've got the base, we've got cloud noise, which I think is really cool. It already starts to give us a bit of a shape. But then I've also added the cloud wispy noise because I want it to sort of match the wispy effect I'm trying to get on the other side. We're going for quite a stylized cloud. You'll see with these, these noise nodes, they're very similar to how you add noise regardless, yeah? We've got amplitude, element size, roughness, pulse length, all that kind of stuff. So basically what they've done is they've packaged all the ways you could add noise into here. And with cloud wispy noise, 
They've simply just added the, the values that are going to start to give you the wispy noise. Right. And now what I've done is I combine them. You see that we get that bottom bit now as well. And I've cached that out. This is my cache from before. Which is cool. If I jump into stage, something that I've also introduced is they've given us a pyro bake, uh, pyro bake volume within Karma. However, what they've done is they've labeled it as a cloud. And all they're really doing is changing the anisotropy of that. Cool. So as you can see, I've got my cloud here. I've already put in a camera so I can view that. And we're starting to get this shape. Because the XPU is going to render a bit quicker, however, clouds are quite heavy uh, because they're volumes. Right. I put down the Karma Physical Sky. If I look at my material library, I put down a Karma Cloud material. That's how Houdini 20 works now. And really all that it's doing is it's just giving us that inisotropy and the extension fall off. It doesn't give us a scatter of the fire like it would with Pyra, but really it's just a Karma Pyra shader, yeah? But they've just labeled it as a cloud material and given us the values that we already need. I've upped my density to 10, just so it comes out a little bit uh, clearer. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Uh, Houdini 20 has very beginner friendly tools and I think cloud tools are the best example of that.